Decorating your home is a little more important than you might think. It's where we live. It's who we are. It's how we express ourselves. But decorating a home after the age of 40 can be a little bit challenging. When you're younger, you don't really have anything to match. You don't have anything to work with. You go out, you start buying. But we have furniture that we've been collecting for decades. My next project, I'm going to be using a sofa I purchased in 1987. And I'm gonna use it, dadgummit, because it's paid for. But it's a challenge because it's old and I need to make it look current and I need to fit it in to this new look that I'm going for. How do we do that? The most important thing is that you get the home you want. That's what this process is all about. That's what this series is all about. How do you take the old and make it new again? How to decorate your home after 50. Hi, I'm Ko and welcome to the Kojo channel. When Joe and I started this channel, we had one purpose in mind. We wanted to show those who are over 50, like us, how to navigate their way through challenges in life because we're trying to figure that out ourselves. How do you navigate travel, decorating, money, clothes, aging parents? We're here to figure that out. We're not gonna tell you what you should do. We're gonna tell you how to get there. What's the process? Because really what you want is a house that reflects you and you need the house that you want. So we're gonna show you a series on bathrooms, bedrooms, kitchens, front porches, landscaping. We're gonna do it all. Let's talk process. When I started decorating 30, 40 years ago, before the internet, I used a stack of magazines and a stack of file folders. I would go through those magazines. If I saw something I liked, I'd rip it out. Don't fold the corners back and keep it in the magazine. It does not work the same way. Rip that sucker out. Put it in the folder, put it to the side, keep going. If I like the tile, if I like a color, if I like curtains, if I like a slip cover, I put them in separate folders and label them that way. This is my colors folder. This is my slip covers folder. This is my sofa folder. This is my foyer folder. Anything at all, make a folder for it. These are the fabrics I like. This is, I want something similar to this. When I go to the store, I'm gonna look for fabrics that look like this. You can start breaking it down into manageable pieces. That's what makes a big project seem much easier, is breaking it down into manageable pieces. Once I even had a folder that said overall look. I could not tell you exactly what it was about that room that I liked, but I liked the whole room. I loved that room. And I wanted to make sure somehow, some way, I emulated that room. I still have that folder from the 90s, and I still use it, and I still love that room. After a while, you're going to see that you've got several folders that you have to go through and start weeding through those and pulling out the ones that don't seem consistent. Really refining them down to maybe two choices per folder. You will pick out your favorite items. Throw away the ones you don't need. You're going to have folders that have exactly what you want. Open those things up, put everything out on the table, and you will see that you have an underlying theme. You're going to see how everything pulls together because you are sticking to your taste and to the things you like. That's going to help you get to a point where you can say, okay, this is what I wanna do. You'll have colors, you'll have wood grains, you'll probably have fabrics that you're leaning towards that you can go and find, maybe solid, maybe a floral, maybe a stripe. You'll know what you're going for. That will help you go straight to the store and start making your selections. Now we have Pinterest. Pinterest is very similar to this, except we have boards. You can have a color board, you can have a sofa board, you can have tile, draperies, everything. Set up the boards. Just sit down one night, start throwing stuff into the boards. I've done it a thousand times. Then when you start to get more serious about the project, go back, look at it and say, okay, I don't think I want this. I don't want this. Start pulling them out. If you still love those pins, just put them into another area, but keep the individual boards kind of pure, knowing that you're doing this for your project. In fact, what I did after getting my colors, my furniture, wood grains, my style, after I got all that together, I put it all into one board, opened it up, and just looked at it. And what I saw was a whole look. And it was my look. So you can do this and get to the look that you want, because that is the objective, to get the look that you want with the budget that you have. So if you wanna try the Pinterest boards and you're not currently on Pinterest, maybe you don't feel very comfortable with it, all you have to do is click on this link and we'll give you some tips on how to get started 
and how to start building your own Pinterest boards for the looks that you want. You've seen the beginning of the process. Set up your folders or set up your Pinterest boards. So now we have to go out and find the items that will best fit those items in our folders or on our boards. So what do you choose first? I usually choose my fabrics first. And once you pick out your fabrics, you can start building with tile and paint. Paint is the thing I choose last because paints can be changed to match the tile exactly or the fabrics exactly if you need that. So be very careful about the order in which you choose these items. Fabrics are a wonderful way to make a room look warm, inviting. You can add color, you can add texture. Fabrics are my go-to when I first want to start on the room. So choose your fabrics, decide what you want. Maybe you need to start thinking about an inspiration piece. For me, it was this pillow. I love everything about this pillow. I love that it's a fish because this is going to be a lake house. I love the colors. The colors were fantastic. And I decided after looking at that one pillow that that was the lane I was going to stay in. So you see these fabrics go with this pillow and the fabric is very durable. I chose this fabric to go on my 1987 sofa and the two club chairs that I bought from a friend, trying to stay within budget. And I'm trying to unite the styles by using one fabric. I love how neutral it is, and I'm going to use pillows that have a pop of color in them to try to liven things up a little bit. I've chosen this red color as a pop of color, and then I've chosen another fabric, which really is more neutral, but it all keeps me within the color range that my fish pillow started from. Stay in your lane. I love where this look is going. I'm not going to have a lot of red in the house, but these little splashes of color are gonna liven things up just a little bit. After that, I go straight to tile. Tiles for a backsplash, tiles for a bathroom, any tile that you need. If you can, buy a sample. Just one little square of tile won't cost you more than 10 bucks. Unless, of course, you're in a high-end store, then it may cost more than that, but it's worth bringing it home, looking at it in natural light, and looking at it with what you've already chosen. I did that for mine. It was really a good idea to do that. I'm so glad I did. This is the cement color tile that I've chosen. It's a porcelain tile, I love it. I think it's gonna go great in both of my bathrooms. I'm gonna use them in the shower stalls and I am going to choose a paint that is going to match those perfectly. I highly recommend getting a color deck from your favorite paint store. I have one from Sherwin-Williams. I have one from Benjamin Moore. I use these all the time. If I go to a tile store and I know the color range I want to stay in, I take this with me, I match that color range up to see if I'm even in the right ballpark. Sometimes you're looking at beiges and when you get home, they're really pink. Sometimes you're looking at blues, you get home and they're really gray or maybe they're really green. You have to stick with what you choose and this sort of keeps you in line. It's another lane that you gotta stay in. If you'd like one of these color decks, I'll put a link in the description below. I am going with a monochromatic look in this house, so I really wanted to make sure that all of the shades of my fabrics, my tiles, and my paints, that they all went together. So choosing the paint last really made it easier for me. It doesn't really matter where I'm ending up. What matters is I'm following a process. If you want bold color in your house, you can still follow this process. The most important thing is that you're going to end up where you want to end up, and I'm going to end up where I want to end up at the end of this process. So remember, you have all of these file folders telling you what you're supposed to do. Basically, you have created a lane for yourself. So remember, stay in your lane. So now it's time to go out and find your fabric, find your tile, find your furniture, whatever it is you think you need for your decorating project. If you stick to this process, you will end up exactly where you wanna be. So what's next? We're gonna show you how to start decorating a room. We're gonna go through an entire house and we're gonna start with bedrooms.